Hey, this is Cameron. Welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. I'm joined here with Tom Spellman of Dave Wilson Nursery, and today we're going to look at reasons why you should plant your own fruit trees. Is that even what I'm talking about? Yeah, There's I think that is what that. you're talking about. No, you know, uh, it, it, it's a subject that uh, has been in debate for decades. And there's a lot of considerations. And the, probably the first and most important consideration as to why you should grow your own fruit trees is because of the uh, unavailability of good quality market fruit. Mm -hmm. And in and, and all fairness to the commercial fruit growers, they can't ship you a tree ripe peach. When that piece of fruit is, is ripe, you can pick it and you take a bite out of it and the juice runs down your chin and it's just delicious. But they can't send that to market. Mm -hmm. So they're going to pick their fruit two weeks, 20 days before peak ripeness. And that way they can send it to the store. It's going to be firm. It's going to have shelf life. It's going to be able to be picked up and squeezed by, by people and still come home and be a, a decent piece of fruit. But it's not going to be at full sugar and it's not going to be at full flavor. So people have accepted that over the years, that if, if we're going to go to the market and buy a peach, that's what we're going to get. So if you grow your own peaches, you know that you're going to get a tree ripe piece of fruit. You can pick it at absolute peak ripeness when the sugar content is the highest and the flavor is going to be absolutely the best. I've seen that be 100% true because I've been at the store and seen Flavor Grenade Pluot. And I got excited because I knew what it was. I said, I know what that is. And so I bought a pound of it and I brought it home and we tasted it, yeah. and it tasted very little like what I just picked off the tree. It was just really unbelievable the difference. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's that's true. And it wasn't so, a, it wasn't bad, but the one off of my tree was just so much better. It exactly, just, it just shined. It was, I don't know, just bursting with flavor and life. Exactly, and and you know, I, I I know lots and lots of people that don't grow their own fruit and go to the market and they buy fruit at the market and they're perfectly happy yeah. with that because that's what they've been raised on. Mm -hmm. That's what they've been eating all all their lives. They understand that market fruit, and I try not to give them any of my tree ripened fruit because it would spoil it. <laughs> and, and I want the farmers to be successful and I want them to, to be able to market their crops. So I don't want to tell a whole lot of people that uh, you can grow better fruit than you can buy. Yeah. <laughs> but the fact is, the only thing we can do really differently is it, we have control over it. We know how it's being grown. We know what fertilizers we're using. We know what pesticides, if any, are being used. Is it organic? Is it chemical? So we have control over that and we can pick it at absolute peak ripeness. So what, you know one of the biggest complaints that I've I've heard over the years is with um, peaches now being available in our grocery stores in January and February they're not coming from here they're coming from the southern yeah. hemisphere. It's summer down there in New Zealand and Australia and other areas where they're growing summer fruits in our off season. So it's nice that we can we can ship them fruit during our summer, their winter, and they can ship us fruit during their summer, our, our winter. So we can put peaches on, on the market shelf pretty much 12 months out of the year now. But one of, the, one of the complaints that people have is they don't know how it's being grown. They don't know what types of fertilizer are being used. They don't know what types of pesticides are, are, are being used on it. And more and more conscientious uh, uh, parents and just health conscious uh, people nowadays want to know. They want to understand that. So growing your own, you have complete control over what you're using and you have the ability to grow it in any way that works for you. You know, one, one thought that I have about growing trees, because I went from not growing anything to kind of growing a few to growing a whole bunch of them, mm -hmm. is being able to walk out and the satisfaction of seeing this thing grow that you've helped to kind of nurture taking a piece of fruit off of it, watching the whole process. I don't know, there's just something like primal about that where you've gone out and you've taken a piece of fruit off of something that you've kind of cultivated and helped. Oh, absolutely. With. And and there's a satisfaction that you don't get when you're just, you know, walking down the aisle, you buy a bag of chips, you buy a thing, you know, a pound of peaches and you go on to buy some meat. It's, it's just not the same experience as when you're part of the whole thing. No, not not at all. In fact, you know, one of the, uh, one of the things that I like to promote in, in my lectures is spend some time with your trees. Mm -hmm. uh, people are always asking, you know, well, where, do, where does the fruit come from? Where is it going to bloom? You know, uh, how much growth am, am I going to get? Where should I make my pruning cuts? How do you know when it's ripe? 
exactly. Yeah. So the only way that you're going to gain that knowledge, you can read it in a book, you can watch it in a video, and that's all great. But the only way you're going to get that practical experience is to go out and spend some time with your trees. Make those cuts. Do your pruning. If you make a mistake, it's okay. That growth is going to come back. You can restructure it. But you want to know. You want to see those things. I want to see when the tree gets fall color and goes dormant. I want to see uh, when the tree is, is uh, starting to bud out in the spring. Where do those flowers come from? On what branches am I going to get that bloom and am I going to get that fruit? And, you know, if you're just... Uh, Throwing a dart at a dartboard, you're 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 gonna you're gonna get it right and you're gonna get it wrong. Mm -hmm. But by going out and watching the tree for a couple of seasons, in that third season, fourth season, fifth season, you know exactly where that flower is gonna come from, and you know exactly where that fruit's gonna set. You know how much you need to thin in order to keep the branches from breaking, and 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 you're gonna follow that tree from the the full 12 months of the year, from the time it goes dormant to the time that it blooms to the time that it, it sets fruit, to the time you harvest fruit, and it goes dormant again. You can see the whole process. And that's that's where you gain that practical knowledge. It also seems like it gives you an appreciation for what the farmers deal with. I mean, so many, I know 100 years ago, or 200 years ago, everybody was involved in agriculture. And now so few people are involved in agriculture um, that it coming out and, and just almost have the discipline of having to wait for the fruit is such a unique thing to come out and go, not ready yet? Oh, come on, are you ready yet? And, and that almost, there's some life lessons in that, I think, that are, are pretty oh, valuable. Oh, well. ab absolutely. And you know what? You try things out a little bit at a time. I, I had an interesting call probably back in late January or early February. And this guy says, uh, hey, about uh, six or seven years ago, I planted a Pinkerton avocado on your recommendation. He goes, um, it's a great variety. It produced like a madman this year. I had a hundred fruit on it. So uh, in the middle of January, uh, I went out and I picked them all. <laughs> and I'm like, you picked them all? He says, yeah, but they didn't really ripen up. They were kind of rubbery. And I'm like, if you're gonna, if you need, to, if you're gonna test fruit and see if it's ripe, you pick two. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you know, sit them on the kitchen counter for a few days. Especially an avocado that has hang yeah, time. Yeah, that's you right. <laughs> you got six months or four or five months hang time. You're not gonna go pick them all at once. You're not gonna eat them. You're not gonna eat 50 avocados in a week. You know? Unless you're a Mexican restaurant. There's no exactly. Other. So I said, here, here's the deal. Next year, you got fruit on it again. Oh yeah, it set some fruit. Next year, uh, about the end of January, go out and pick two or three. Yeah. See how they ripen up. If they're still kind of rubbery give it two weeks and go try two or three more. Pinkerton's gonna ripen from from around the 1st of February all the way up until around June or even early July. <laughs> wow. So there's no reason to go and pick all your fruit at one time and then realize that you made a mistake. Yeah. A little bit at a time. Especially with something that doesn't give you that, you have to wait for an avocado anyway. Exactly. So, you know, you come out and you take a peach and you can tell whether or not it's ripe. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. And if it's not, you're not gonna pick a second or a third one. That's right. Yeah, I've gotten, that's the one downside to, well, not a downside, but another lesson is in the whole waiting. So often I've had where I come out and I get a little greedy because it gets some color on it. And, and on really, really young trees, you start eating them and next thing you know, you've run out of fruit. So be patient. Give it a little bit of time. Don't rush it. It'll, it'll, it'll get there. Let the fruit really ripen up on your tree. Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, the nice thing about some of the newer interspecifics, uh, the, the cherry plums, the plueries, and mm -hmm. some of the pluots, uh, the spice z nectoplum, things like that. They have a three, four, five week hang time. Those, uh, my flavor grenade pluots been on there for, we've been eating them for the last five weeks. Absolutely, and there's still plenty more yeah, on the tree. Right. So, you know, be patient, a little bit at a time. Don't go and pick the whole crop. Uh, you're not gonna eat it all at once. If you do, you'll only do that once too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> These are refreshing too. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first looked at this variety at Zagers, probably 20 years ago, I looked at it and I thought, you know, it looks that looks like it has European plum in it. Mm -hmm. And if it does, it's gonna be really high chill. And they told me, oh, it's probably about 800 chill hours. <laughs> and I, I, I said, you know, I gotta try it anyway. So I brought it down, planted it down here. Second year had probably 20 fruit on it. You know, third year 50 fruit on it. Like this thing is not high chill. Yeah, it, not might, even it close. might have European plum in it, but it is not high chill. At it's all. like European plum with a tan. 
Yeah, it's <laughs> really, really good and really adaptable. Yeah. It's all great now when the kids come out, they go, can I, they call everything a plum now, but can I get a plum? I'm like, yeah, go pick. That's what I'm doing with all these kids. I'm trying to make it so that the trees can outpace them. And then when they're saying, I'm hungry, <laughs> it's like, you don't want to pick it. Mm -hmm. Go out there and do it. So I think one other really important concept or, or aspect of, of backyard growing is for me, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I love my job. I love the people I work with. I love all of my customers. I have some, you know, I have a great job. I have my dream job. But one thing that I have to do almost on a daily basis is spend time on the Southern California freeway system. Mm. And I might be going 100 miles to San Diego or 150 miles to the Central Coast or I might, next week I'm going to Phoenix, Arizona. So I'm out on the road all the time. And I don't have to tell you what a hassle Southern California traffic is. <laughs> yes. So it's not uncommon for me to get home at the end of the day and be frustrated and blood pressure's up and you know, a little vein in my forehead's throbbing and I can walk in the house, I can throw on my hat, I can uh, uh, grab my clippers and walk out into the orchard and within about five or 10 minutes, I realize that, hey, you know what? It's nice out here, you know, I can see the, the hear the birds and see the, the hummingbirds and butterflies and eat a couple pieces of fruit and do a little pruning and pretty soon the blood pressure's down, you know, I'm, I'm relaxed. Trees don't argue with you. Trees don't have a horn to honk at you. They listen really good. They do. Yeah. They do. And, and whatever you tell them, if you tell them right, they're going to do it for you. That's so it's, it's not only is it a good physical exercise mm -hmm. to get out and get a little sunshine, get a little uh, physical activity, but I get to clear my head. You know, uh, the trees don't argue with you. And, and quite frankly, my, my landscape is my psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that makes me feel better than coming home after a, a frustrating day on the freeway and going out and working for 45 minutes or an hour in, in my landscape and it just kind of tones the whole thing down. So you don't have to go to the gym, you don't have to spend that gym membership. Get out and dig a hole, get out and plant a tree, get out and do a little pruning, pick some fruit, enjoy some time in, in the environment that you've created for you and your family. Just like what you've done here. You have trees here, you can harvest fruit 12 months out of the year. Uh, you can always come out here and, and get your head straight, spend a little time out here, and, and nobody's yelling at you, and nobody's honking their horn. It's peaceful, and it, you know, it's, everybody should have the opportunity to create this type of an environment that, that they like, where they like to spend time. And that's what makes it all worthwhile for me. I love that. I think one aspect of that is that these trees are really almost partnering with you. Absolutely. So when you come out, you know, so often there's stuff that's contentious. You've got a boss that's doing this or a neighbor who's doing that. And you come out and this tree is wanting to grow and you're wanting it to grow. It's wanting to produce fruit and you're wanting it to produce fruit. Yeah. And so there's something about just going around and it's almost like you're caring for each other. You care for the tree and then it cares for you by giving that, you the fruit. That's, that's the bottom line. It absolutely does. You know, and you spend a little time on it. You understand it. You understand its patterns and when it's going to do what it's going to do. and and a little bit of TLC goes a long way with trees. Hey, if, you, if you're on the fence about planting a fruit tree, um, or any kind of tree for that matter, but we think fruit trees are the tops, and so just go do it. Um, there's a bit of homework you want to do, you want to look and make sure that it's something that'll work in your area and that, but ultimately, get it in the ground, you're going to be tasting ripe fruit, you're going to be getting physical activity. You're going to be getting out in nature and doing um, really what humankind has been doing for millennia. And so um, anyway, this uh, this has been such a rewarding thing for me, Tom, as far as even just having an orchard or any kind of trees to go out, whether it started with my few that were out in the front, which are yeah. in a small space, and now I've got this large amount of space to do. Um, this has been really good. So if you, haven't, if you haven't done it yet or you're kind of on the fence, I encourage you to go do it right now. It's totally worth it. I think you'll be really happy that you did. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Busy Gardener channel, now would be a good time to do it. They should push like right down there or right down there or wherever that subscribe button is, go push it right now. This second. Yeah? It'll be worth your while. Yeah. Absolutely. Do it. Um, thanks for tuning in. And um, Tom, I want to thank you for coming by and sharing some thoughts on this. Whether you've got one tree in your orchard or 500, until next time, stay busy.